Welcome to another Technical Corner. We're here with Rodney from Langley Alloys, talking about more materials. I, I can't wait to learn about. Um, this is one that people maybe don't know that much about. What is it, Rodney? So, we're going to talk about Alloy 925, and you're absolutely right. Unless you're in a relatively small part of the oil and gas industry, you will not be familiar with it. You'll not come across it. But it's really found a, a time and a place over the last few years where manufacturers are looking for a cost out, lower cost alternative alloys. And this is being um, taken up as an alternative to Inconel 718. Yeah, absolutely. And we covered 825 in a different video. So if you want to have a look at that, where we talked about it being like kind of an entry, ne entry level nickel alloy, this has had some extra processing. I'm sure you can tell us more about it. What is that extra processing? What does it make it do? What's it made of? So you're absolutely right. The easiest way for me to describe it is alloy 825 and 925 being brother and sister. Almost the same composition, which means it's got near identical corrosion resistance and physical properties. However, 825 is not particularly well known for its strength. 925 takes 825 and it boosts it right up. So it gives it that really high strength that's roughly comparable with, with 718, for instance. Uh, and it's subtle tweaks in the composition and it's an additional heat treatment process, precipitation hardening or aging as it's called. You form very small particles within the product and that gives it its strength, but you're getting into some of the hardcore metallurgy now really. But 925 is just 825 super strength. Brilliant, and so 925 being super strength, comparable to 718, what does that mean people have been able to do? Because it's roughly the same strength as 718, if you've got an existing product or component that's designed in Inconel 718, you can literally switch the, the product, switch the material without having to massively change the design. Now, the strength is roughly the same. The corrosion resistance isn't. You've got less nickel, less expensive raw materials, but you're able to achieve maybe 20% or more cost saving over 718, which is why these large manufacturers are so interested in the product in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. So you could, when, when would they pick this material? When is it possible to pick this material? Not only just for mechanical properties, but when they're, they can accept a slightly less corrosion resistance? Um, it might be strange to you or other people, but not every oil well is the same. Uh, there are different levels of corrosivity, different levels of contaminant. People describe oil wells as being sweet or sour. Uh, offshore, onshore, and depending on the severity of the environment, you can get away with varying levels of corrosion resistance. And you've brought a cutting tool uh, here. What's the story behind it? This alloy is used in a relatively small number of applications, downhole tooling, and all of those parts are sort of tubular in nature, but the product has only been available as a solid bar. So there's an incredible amount of waste uh, in producing these sorts of tubular components where 70-80% of the metal ends up as swarf. Every bar that we've ever sold as Langley Alloys, we've used our in-house deep hole borer. So this is a trepanning head where you'd remove the core, but whether you're removing the core or just totally drilling out the centre of the bar, you are converting a lot of expensive metal into a lot of low value swarf and chippings for recycling. Yeah, which you absolutely you have to do if you're going to make a component like that. You have to just take the swarf out. It's a, it's a shame. But there's actually a brand new product on the table here that you, you're, you're excited to show us. It's not an easy alloy to manufacture. It's definitely not an easy uh, alloy to produce as a, as a pipe uh, or as a heavy wall pipe. Uh, you're trying to achieve those very high uh, strength levels um, with the additional heat treatment, etc., etc. So up until now, it's only been that solid bar form. But um, if you can generate it, and we can with our mill partner as uh, a heavy wall product such as this, then all of a sudden, not only are you saving on the cost of the metal compared to 718, but you're saving on the product form as well. You're not having to remove and effectively scrap off a large amount of uh, waste in the center of the product. So that will really continue to drive the, the cost effectiveness of the solution. Absolutely, and this is a brand new product that's not been available previously. So a lot of people who are originally having to spend a lot of money on boring material out and, and, and wasting a lot of that material, now you can not only save material, but save, save money as well. Absolutely, it's a very small niche market. And there's a handful of people who this is interested in. And the ones that are interested in it, guess what? We're already speaking to them, but there will be for sure other applications this will find its way into. I find it personally amazing that Langley Alloys have been pushing the boundaries of material science, finding solutions for our customers for 
over eight years, you're still finding brand new products. That's Alloy 95, now available in tube form.